Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I draw lips. Be sure to watch it right through to the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Now for the outline I'm using my usual method which is the freehand method. Now I've included a inset photograph there of the finished work. This is so that you can compare as the drawing goes along to see how it progressed. The pencil I'm using for the outline is a Carbothello 708. These are the pencils now that I'm going to be using for the underdrawing. First thing I do is just rub off and make the outline a bit lighter with a kneadable eraser. Just adding a couple of more pencils to the mix, which is the dark green and like a dark cold red for the deep shadows. Decided to speed through this underdrawing, not spend too much time. I want the time to be spent on the actual details, which I'll go through later on and, and there'll be a lot of real time so be sure to watch it right through to the end. Now the purpose of the underdrawing is to get that basic feel and the shapes correct. So you're moving things around, the outline around and getting that sort of feel you want in, just basically just getting everything in place. What it does as well, it makes you more relaxed when you start putting the richer colours in because you've actually started, you've put something down, you've got some guidelines, you've already you know, mapped it out and it's really fun this stage because you can just relax and have fun with it. Now for the next stage I'm using these ready mix pencils from Karen Diash. They're really bright and rich in pigment so they really stand out. So I suggest getting a few of those if you can. Uh, if you haven't got that, the Carbothello, if you just press a bit harder on the pencil it creates more pigment uh, and creates more vibrancy but the Karen Diash pencils are superb. What I like to do is to find a pencil that is very similar in colour and then glaze over the top with the primaries or secondaries just to get their subtleties. It's another pencil from Karen D. Ash. It's a pre-mix pencil, it's like a yellow ochre mix with white and a little bit of red. I've used that there as well just for this flesh tones and then just go over with white. Now this is the second stage, it's still a blocking but it's more richer colours so the first one is very lightly put on then this one is more pigment, not concerned with detail, more of the colour and the feeling of it. Um, so it's just a case of just getting the shapes correct, moving things about still. Once you're happy with this stage then you can go in then with the details. If you're getting value from this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Right, I've slowed the footage down a little now so you can see how I start to put the details in. Now this stage is more sort of refined, so you're refining the actual blocking you've done, trying to get the feel right, putting more colour in there, trying to get the colours correct now. Also at this stage 
I go deeper into the connection to the actual personality and energy of that object or part of an object in this case lips there's still energy there of the person feeling emotion so connect to that by opening the heart try not to think about it but just feel it The areas that I want to be soft, I tend to use my pencil and grip it quite a long way from the point so it becomes looser marks because I don't want it too detailed in these areas because they've got to be soft. Now I'm using the Carbofello pencil as well to soften things down but here I'm putting little bits of hair and texture to the skin as well so that's got to be added when you start putting the details in. But I wanted to get a little bit of the skin sorted before I start putting the final details in the lips. Right, slowing things down now. This is real time, so you can have a closer look at what I'm doing here. Now, with lips, they can be quite subtle. And this pencil really worked well because it's like, it's red with a bit of blue in it. It's just a very sort of light purple. Now, if you haven't got this pencil, just go over with ultramarine and white, it just to do the same job, but it just worked well and that's why I used it there. Now I'm using the Ultramarine uh, Conti uh, Paris pencil. It's a very soft pencil, very good for glazing. And then going over again with red. So I'm making a purple there, but a darker purple than the one I used previously, what were already mixed purple. Now the lips are like translucent. You can, it's like there's depth to it. There's colours that seems to go deeper than what the surface. So what I try and do is go lighter underneath then glaze over with darker. So it, the, the lightness shines through the colour then. And so it gives an illusion of this depth and this feeling of, of translucency. If you are interested in my technique, for longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please join me on Patreon. Link is in the description below. Now for the shadows I'm using dark green and red. I always use the complementary colour to create the shadows if you can. It gives a more cleaner and more realistic look to the shadows rather than using black. Now here you can see me mapping out again, putting the white in first so I'll be glazing over this later but you have to do it lighter to start with so then when you glaze over it, it becomes the correct colour. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as this will help the channel to grow. You've 
probably noticed I've not used any blending tools. I tend to use this pencil here, which is a Carbothello White. It tends to blend quite nicely over things, and then you can just put a bit more pigment on top then to get the colour correct. Um, also, I use my finger a lot. Just a dab of my finger can just soften something. Sometimes I can use a colour shaper as well, which is a really good tool. It's like a brush with a silicon tip, but I've not needed to use it on this drawing. It's only in some cases I use that. It's always a good idea to squint your eyes as well to make sure that the values are correct, um, because it does make a massive difference to realism. And you tend to find that the only thing really that makes it not realistic is that everything looks flat. So paying attention to shadows and the correct values just makes all the difference. There's some real time footage again just to show you how I'm just putting the little fine hairs and also the texture to the skin with the white. I can always glaze again over to subtlety, change that later. But it's really important to get this between the skin and the lips so there's no hard edge because it'll look like plastic lips if you do that. So you really have to spend a lot of attention just making sure that the edge where the skin meets the lips that it's subtle and it's slightly blurred. Also skin is not smooth, there's all sorts of little bumps and squiggles and all sorts of things so I'm using the pencil here using little circle movements, little dashes, just to get that texture. If you find that certain areas have not got that sort of vibrancy and it looks a bit flat, just go over with a bit of lemon yellow, be surprised how that just makes all the difference. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. There's the finished work. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it. it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message in the comments below. Uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce. I've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on. And to subscribe, click on the circle here. It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much. Take care and be well.